Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 6. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 30 of Book 6. Now, in this proposition, we're trying to cut a line into the extreme ratio. And what that means is we're cutting the line whereas AB to AE equals AE to EB. This is sometimes referred to the golden ratio. If you look at these two line segments as A and B, because what we're saying is that A plus B to A is equal to A to B. So this is sometimes referred to as the golden ratio. However, here it is just being described as the extreme ratio of a line. So how are we going to do that? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct a square on AB. The next thing we're going to use is we're going to use all the methods of Proposition 29 of this book, and we are going to draw a parallelogram that is equal in area to CB, that extends past the line AB, and that whatever passes by the line AB will be similar to a square, or in other words, it will be a square. I'm not going to skip through these steps. I'm going to show you these steps very quickly from Proposition 29, so we're sort of regressing a bit to Proposition 29 right here. First, we're splitting CA at the point alpha. We're constructing a similar shape to the one we want, which is a square, onto half of the line segment. Then we draw a shape doesn't matter what it is, but we draw a shape that is equal in area to CB plus the area that is drawn on half of the line segment. So this area here, H delta, is equal to CB plus A gamma. We redraw this into a square, so this must be a square, and <coughs> This whole area, again, is equal to CB plus A gamma. So if we remove A gamma, what is left over is equal to the area of CB. And again, very quickly, this area here is equal to this area here, because it is two complementary parallelograms along a diagonal. This area here is equal to this area here, because they are drawn on a line segment that has been bisected. So this area equals this area equals this area. So if we remove this one and add this one, the result will still be equal to the area of CB, and AD will be a square. So again, this was all Proposition 29. Getting back to Proposition 30, now that we have drawn CD. Let's look at what we have. We have CB is equal to AD, and AD is a square. Let's define the point E of the intersection of FD and AB, and E is the extreme ratio, such that AE, sorry, AB to AE is equal to AE to EB. So that's how we do it. Let's prove that this is actually accurate. So again, we have CB is equal to, we have CB is equal to CD, and AD is a square. We remove this section here from both of them, and we have that FB is equal to AD. Now we have two equal angular parallelograms that are equal in area. And in that case, according to Proposition 14, the sides about the parallelograms are reciprocally proportional, which means that FE to ED is equal to AE to EB. All right, so this is just 
besides being reciprocally proportional. But Fe is equal to AB because AB is a square. So we're just going to replace Fe with AB. Now let's look at AD. Sorry, ED. ED is equal to AE because it is also part of a square. So if we replace ED with AE, so now we're replacing ED with AE. And now we're left with that AB to AE is equal to AE to EB, which is what we were trying to prove. This is the extreme ratio. We have now cut this line in the extreme ratio. And AB is greater than AE, obviously. So therefore, we know that AE is greater than EB. And that concludes this demonstration and proof of how to cut a finite line into an extreme ratio. But before I stop, I would like to go back to a proposition in book two that was doing the same thing. Its purpose was not. Its purpose actually was to make this construction where we have a square and a rectangle equal to each other. I just want to show it to you for contrast. So there will be a brief pause, come back, show you something. Anyway, this proof is finished, it's taken care of. As I said, I just want you to compare it to another proof. All right, so this proof, we're going to cut a straight line into segments such that the rectangle formed by, let me read this right, rectangular formed by AB and BH is equal to the square formed on AH. So just to show you, this is the actually the same thing as getting the extreme ratio. We have AB times BH is equal to AH times AH, or in other words, AB, the ratio of AB to AH will be equal to the AH to BH. So we have that AB is to AH as AH is to HB. So this is exactly the same thing that we were doing in Proposition 30 of Book 6. So how do we do it in this case? The construction is very, very different. In this case, again, we start by drawing a square on AB, and we find the midpoint E, draw a line <coughs> from B to E, and then construct a circle where E is the center of circle, EB is the radius, and find the point F, which is the continuation of the line AC. So now we have the point F. We construct a parallelogram on AF, and where it intersects the line is the point H, and we have that FH is equal to HD. And at this point, uh, this proof goes forth to prove that FH and HD are equivalent. But if you look at this figure, you can see it is the same figure as what we used to find the golden ratio at the point H. So there are two very distinctly different ways of finding this golden ratio. Between you and me, I think this one is an easier way of doing it. Anyway, as I said, I just wanted to show you this for comparison. So anyway, there it is, um, back to Proposition 30 and how this proposition found the extreme ratio. And that's it.